Welcome to another Finish First session with Judge Dawson. And today I am talking about your journey or your voyage, your voyage or your journey. So if you take the word voyage, right, you're probably thinking of some of the movies that we used to watch where pirates and things like that would go on these long voyages, which is basically a journey of exploration. It's a travel into the unknown, though you know what you're seeking and what you're hoping for, the unknown is what you're gonna get. And the same thing happens with us every day in life. We are traveling through the unknown, but there are ways that we can control that journey so that we make sure that we are successful. So that's what we're gonna talk about today in this Finish First session, how to move through your journey in a way that provides you with success. Let's go. So there are a couple of things I want you to consider when we talk about your journey. The first thing is that the journey that you take in life, I want you to look at it today from the standpoint of a slippery slope. Because journeys, when you get on a journey, you are driving down a specific path. You are going in a specific direction. And many times you are picking up momentum as you go in this direction. Why is it important to note that you're picking up momentum? Because as you travel through the journey, your momentum will propel you faster and faster in the direction that you're going. So the first thing when you talk about journey is to make sure you know where you are going. Take your pen, write that down. Make sure you know where you are going. That means you have to set your journey out before you begin. I like to travel. Every now and then I get a chance to get away. And one of the things I do when I travel is I like to explore the area by walking or running. To be honest with you, I run. I'm a runner, right? So I consider those little bits and pieces and times that I get alone as a journey. But the thing is, because I am in unknown territory, I need to set out my journey so that I know where I'm going. So what do I do? I pull out my phone, I pull out the app, the map app, and I look to the area to see what is around. Because I need to know where are the pitfalls? Where are the dead ends? Where are the dangerous parts so that I can avoid those parts or prepare for those parts? So the same thing applies to you and your journey. The first thing you have to do is map out where you want to go in your journey. Now, let me give you a way to do that, because oftentimes, you know, it's, it's very daunting or very troublesome to think, you know, what I need to know exactly what I want to do. You know, I have a daughter. She's young and she came to me the other day and said, Dad, um, I'm, I'm stressed out. And I said, what are you stressed out for? You're way too young to be stressed. She said, I don't know what I want to do when I get older. And I said, sweetheart, you have many many years before you get older. Don't worry about it now. So here's the thing. When you're setting your goals, you could get worried because, hey, you know what? I don't know what I want to do in the next one, two, three, four, five years. It can get so overwhelming that it depresses you and stalls you out, meaning you won't be able to go anywhere. So here's how you get around that. At the very least, determine right now where you don't want to go. Where are the places that you don't want to be? Where are the places and situations where you don't want to end up? I submit to you because I'm a judge that one of those places would be jail. You don't want to be in jail. You don't want to go to jail. So at the very least, you can decide today that you are going to move in a way that will keep you out of jail. So write that down right now. Take a pen and write down where don't you want to go? These steps are very important. So as you write down where you don't want to go, now you need to make a list of how do you make sure you don't go where you don't want to go? Let me give you an example. If you don't want to go to jail, then you don't want to be pulled over by police. So if you don't want to be pulled over by police, you don't break the traffic laws. Those dots connect. And if you don't want to be taken to jail, even if by chance you're pulled over by the police, 
don't drive without a valid license. See, that's something that you can control. Too often we give up control over the things that we can control. There are some things that will always be out of your control. There will be some situations and circumstances that you can't do anything about. But on the flip side of that, there are many things that you really can control. Driving without a valid license is something that you can control because you have a couple of options. Either you get your license valid or you don't drive the car. And if you don't drive the car, you figure out other means of transportation. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying you're not going to be challenged by it. But there are other means of transportation. There are adjustments that you can make so that you can achieve your goal, which right now is not to go to jail. So we're talking about traveling on your voyage or going through your journey. What we're talking about specifically is starting out, you need to set your goals of where you want to go. And if you don't know where you want to go, at least identify where you don't want to go. The next step is to figure out who do you want to have with you on this journey? Who do you want riding in the car with you or riding on the bus with you? You need to make that decision really, really quick because we all know that there are some people who will get on the bus with you and they will take that entire bus down. Why? Well, maybe it's their intention to take the bus down. Maybe it's their actions. Maybe it's something that they're involved in. Let's keep it real. If your goal is to go to college or your goal is to stay out of jail because you don't want to go to jail, then you can't allow people who are selling drugs, carrying guns illegally, doing all types of things that have negative interaction with the legal system, you can't let them on your bus. You can't let them in your car. So it's really simple mathematics. If you know where you want to go or where you don't want to go, the next obvious step is to make sure that you have people in your car or in the ride with you or on the ride with you who are not going to take you in the opposite direction of where you want to go. So determine who you are going to roll with on your journey. Now, as we continue talking about journey, let's talk about that slippery slope. I started with the information about slippery slope, how the fact that you are traveling on a road, you are picking up momentum, and that can lead you in a specific direction. We've all made mistakes. We have all had setbacks. But the key is, is to determine whether or not you are on a slippery slope into darkness and into failure. Because as you go down, you are moving away from your goals. You are moving away from positivity. You are moving away from light. Michelle Obama said it best. She said, when they go low, she goes high. And that statement may have been repeated a million times, but it bears repeating. Because the bottom line is that when you go low, if you go so low, there's nothing there for you. All of your blessings all of your success is when you fly high. So you have to determine whether or not you are on a slippery slope, a slippery slope to destruction or a slippery slope to not achieving your goals. So here's the bad thing about a slippery slope. And this is something you need to keep in mind. While you're on the slippery slope, you don't even know it. You don't even know it. There are times where you will be sliding down a rabbit hole and you are so emotionally involved with your concerns that you don't even see it happening. That's one of the things that I witness every day as a judge. When I am on the bench, I can actually see people in front of me going down a slope to destruction that they can't even see. For instance, there was a young man in my courtroom dealing with a domestic violence case. And I told him that whenever there's a domestic violence case, when I don't know anything about it, the first thing we do is we enter a plea of not guilty, right? We say that you're not guilty. Then the next thing that I do is I will let you out of jail on the condition that you have no contact with the alleged victim. 
The reason I do that is because I want to make sure that you're safe and the victim's safe and that no one can say that you're doing anything to negatively affect the case. So we have a no contact order. This young man stood in front of me and looked really kind of bewildered. He didn't understand it. So I tried to break it down for him. I said, look, if you contact this young lady, you will serve six months in jail. His reaction was astonishment at the fact that he would serve six months in jail. Do you see where he went wrong in that analysis? And do you see the slippery slope? Take a moment, think about it. Do you see the slippery slope? Because here is the slippery slope. Instead of saying, you know what, judge, I don't care what the jail time is, what the penalty is, you don't have to worry about it because I am not going to contact that woman. That should have been his answer. But instead, he was overly consumed with the penalty if he contacts the young lady. Why? Because he's probably going to walk right out of my courtroom and contact the young lady. That's an example of someone sliding down a slippery slope and not even being aware of the fall as they are falling. So I submit to you today, try your best to grab the sides and stop your descent. Stop falling down the slippery slope. And if you don't know that you're falling, ask someone that you trust. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a relative, but definitely tap into somebody that you trust to ask them, do you see me sliding down a slippery slope? Do you see where I'm doing things that are going to derail my future or that's going to cause me to miss the mark on achieving my goals? Or even worse, do you see me falling down a slope in a sense that I may end up in jail? Ask someone that you trust. Ask someone who cares about you because you do not want to fall down into darkness. All right. Why don't you want to fall into darkness? Well, Number one, darkness is void of light. Darkness does not have any light. So if you fall into a pit of darkness, how will you see the light? So what I mean by that is if you are so entrenched into your mess, when somebody positive comes along with advice or wisdom on how to get out of that mess, you won't see it because you're totally in the dark. Your mind is in the dark. Your mind set is in the dark. Matter of fact, you probably have become so used to the dark that you don't even want to get out of it. So you want to avoid darkness at all costs because darkness is void of light. That's number one. Number two, darkness will cause you to stumble because you can't see. So if you are rolling down the path of darkness, you started smoking drugs because you wanted to get high and you think it's no big deal. Best believe once you become addicted, the next thing you know, you're in the middle of the street twerking, stripping, and you are in need of desperate help because you are now unable to get the help that you need because you are so deep in the darkness that you have tripped, stumbled, and fallen. And now either you're gonna have to work your butt off to get up or you're going to need somebody's help to get up. So darkness will make you tumble and make you fall. And number one, darkness is void of light. But here's the good news, everyone. Light will prevail. Seriously. On the large arc of life, from the beginning to the end, light always wins whether it's during your lifetime or the next lifetime. Maybe it's while you're in jail, suffering from the decisions that you made, now all of a sudden the light is gonna prevail. Or maybe it's when you've turned your life around because I don't think you have to go through total destruction to find the light. But I do submit to you that light will prevail. Light will keep you from the destruction of darkness. Light will keep you from the limitations of darkness. Light will keep you on the track and on the path 
of a positive journey. Remember, we're talking about your journey. So how do you get the light? First step is look up, chin up, head up. Don't look down. Don't stay in despair, but look up with positivity. So it takes your continence. It takes your body language to seek the light. That's the first part. And then the second one is to actually diligently seek light. Seek the light in other people on your journey, on your bus. Make sure people are with you who are positive, who are bringing you positive light. Make sure there are people with you on this journey who are going to bring you information and education and tools that you can use to get to the next level. So the way to defeat the darkness on your journey, the way to stop this slippery slope sliding into darkness and despair, jail, probation, fines, cost, jail, destruction, is for you to seek light. Seek to be around people who will brighten your day, who will raise your continence, your self-esteem, and who will inject positivity into your life. They will inject the positivity through their expectations of you. They will inject positivity in the way that they are walking so that when you are around that person, you don't even feel comfortable being dark because they are filled with so much light. The challenge for you and me is that darkness is easy to come by and light is a little bit harder to find. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. So take an inventory today of the people that you are allowing on your journey, on your voyage with you. Are they bringing you light? Are they bringing you positivity? Are they helping you roll down this path with the minimal amount of setbacks? Because we're gonna have setbacks no matter what. I don't care how positive you are. I don't care how many people you help. You are always gonna have setbacks because that's life. But the question is, while you are traveling on this voyage, do you have people around you who are supporting your positivity, who are giving you information, education, and tools that would help pull you along when you need their helping hand? Today, as we think about the journey that we're on, and remember this, we are all on a journey. Some of us see it and we're active and we're making sure that we're traveling in the right direction, some of us don't even realize the journey and the path that we are on. But we are all on a journey. And now that you know that, first step, set out your goals of where you want this journey and this voyage to lead you to. We are no longer in the dark ages. You don't have to just float around and wonder where you're gonna end up. Set your course. And then remember, if you are not ready to set your course, go in the opposite direction. Make sure you identify what you don't want in your life, the people that you don't want in your life, the relationship type that you don't want in your life, the situation or circumstance like jail and probation. So identify what you don't want and then figure out the people that you need to be with you on your journey and those you need to get rid of because we we are seeking people who will bring light to us. There's enough darkness to go around. We don't need that darkness. We need light. So make sure the people around you are bringing you the light. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Judge Dawson. That was my moment with you. My finish first cycle breaker talk. We were talking about the journey that you're on because I want nothing but the most successful journey for you. Remember, there will be setbacks, there will be heartbreaks, there will be you know, penalties and all types of things that you don't expect. But as long as you have your eyes on the prize, that positive journey, and, and as long as you have people with you who are positive in your life, you will make it. You will make it, your family will make it, and you will leave a legacy of positivity for the next generation to then use on their journey to success also. All right. Until next time, continue to be cycle breakers. Do the absolute best you can. The light in me honors and I recognize the light in you. Namaste.